Hey, I'm Parker. I'm gonna show you how to make a simple, yet tough as nails, leather satchel. I call it the number 88. When you buy the digital pattern for this bag from my website, you have the option of using your home printer and piecing it together like a puzzle. Or if you wanna save the time, you can send the file to a local print shop like Kinko's or send it to pdfplotting.com. I just used a super high tech and very manly glue stick. But spray adhesive also works well and is a little faster. I actually had some in the shop but ran out before filming this. It's a little extra work, but you'll be much better off transferring the paper pattern to poster board or oak tag. It'll be a lot easier to use on the leather and it lasts longer. All right, now we've got the pattern pieces cut out, but before you start tracing, I usually like to cut away the butt section to make uh, the side a little easier to work with. Then cut a straight edge on the top of your hide or the back section for your straps. The longest strap you'll need is about 47 inches long, so make sure you have at least that much of a straight edge to cut. I ended up not cutting any straps from this hide because I had some 9 to 10 ounce belt scraps that I decided to use for my straps. But make sure you have around 100 inches of total strap to work with before you start tracing out the pattern pieces. By the way, for this bag, I recommend about 6 to 7 ounces medium to firm temper leather. But if possible, use 9 to 10 ounces for all the straps. If you can't do that, the 6 to 7 might feel a little more flimsy and it might be more likely to stretch over time, but it should work just fine if that's your only option. This trim knife that I got from Weaver with the curved blade has become my favorite go-to knife, especially for heavyweight leather like this. It's pretty versatile and strong and it feels a lot more natural on curvy lines like this. If you'd like to add the laptop divider and pockets, I recommend using something a little lighter weight, like four to five ounces. Again, if the 6.7 is your only option, it'll work just fine. But I kind of like the natural veg color as an accent for the interior anyway. This is also a good idea if you're hoping to get more mileage out of your main six to seven ounce leather. It's a lot more likely you'll get two bags out of one hide if you do this. Now, I'm very lucky. My business has allowed me to invest in some nice equipment like this hand-operated clicker press and my machines. But keep in mind, everything on this project can be done with hand tools. The cutting, the skiving, and the stitching. It takes a lot longer, but it's totally doable. All right, this is optional, but I like to put a small bevel on all the exposed edges. It'll just keep the edges feeling smooth and keep them from looking buggered up over time. I do it on the top and on the flesh side. However, you don't want to bevel an inside edge that will eventually be married up to another edge later on in the process because it'll create a little gap in the middle of the paired up pieces. So you can see here, I'm marking the point where the gusset will meet up with the lid so I don't bevel the edge beyond that point on the flesh side. You can see here I made little cutout windows on the pattern right at the stitch line so I know where to apply the glue. I'm using Aqualim 315 water-based contact adhesive in a little squeeze bottle. I'll have links for this stuff down in the description. Also you'll notice that the pockets panel has one side that's flared out. But when you glue it down that flared side should match up vertically to create a pucker in the leather for the pocket. I decided to skive down the edge of the laptop divider panel. It's pretty easily done with the bell skiver. However, if I had to skive it by hand, I'd probably skip this step. It's not totally necessary. It's just going to help remove some of the bulk on that edge. Then I used an adjustable edge groover set at about 1 8 of an inch, mostly as a guide for my stitch line, though it will help bury the stitch a little to protect it. I'm sewing this part on my Texo 2750 because it was already set up with white 138 thread. However, I didn't check the bobbin before starting and I ran out of bobbin thread as I was sewing. So I pulled the last few stitches back and made sure to pull the last stitch in between the two layers of leather. Then I wound a new bobbin and finished it out by overlapping the last couple stitches to help lock it in. Then I run a few straight stitch lines that are pre-marked for my pattern to divide up the pocket pieces. 
Feel free to get creative with your pockets. I like having a couple pen slots and two bigger pockets for charging blocks and cords. I use my heat imprinter to emboss my maker's mark on the back panel. If you don't have a heat imprinter, you can use a hand setter and a maul to stamp your logo as well. So now I'm going to glue and stitch the back pocket panel. Since we're gluing onto the smooth side of the leather, I'm using a tool called a detail rougher to scuff up the leather. This will help you get a much better bond, but you can also do it just using a scratch awl. And then I moved over to my Cobra Class 3 to stitch it with 207 thread. I want a pretty heavy stitch for the majority of this bag. Now I'm going to assemble the D-ring tabs. Technically the rivet will be enough to hold these tabs in place for stitching, but I'm using the contact adhesive to make sure the tabs stay nicely sealed up, especially in the corners. I'm using the double cap rivets from Buckle Guy. Most of them are 9mm caps and 9mm posts. But on some really thick parts like this one, I use the 12mm posts. If you're going to stitch these tabs by hand, I would use a two prong stitching punch and just follow the curve of the tab. I would also recommend you take the stitch all the way to the top corners of the tabs and wrap the stitch around the edge. The presser foot on my machine would bump into the D-rings, so I start and stop the stitch just a little bit lower. Now we need to assemble the top handle. There's a template for this strap in the pattern set. You'll notice there's a red dotted line that marks the point where the opposite end of the strap will meet once it's folded up. So now I can slip on the D-rings and glue this strap into place. You can make other marks if you need to to help with the gluing. To get a better, faster bond with the adhesive, use something to spread it out. Let each side get tacky before you combine them and then tap it down with a hammer. The impact of the hammer will get you a really strong bond. You could run a few rivets here if it's easier, but I'm going to run two stitches down the sides of the strap. It's tempting to make a perpendicular turn to connect these two stitches, but I would discourage that. Stitching basically acts like a perforation on a notebook paper. It'll tear if it's being pulled in the wrong direction. So I always try and keep the stitch running in the same direction of the pressure that will be applied to the strap. This is the wrap that goes around our handle strap. It's six inches wide and the length is about five and a half inches, but it, it won't matter because I'm going to trim it after I stitch it down. So I wrapped it around the strap to get an idea of where I need to apply the adhesive. And I let it get tacky and stuck it together. And I have this drill press clamp that helps in situations like this to get a good bond. But as always, you can just use a hammer as well. After letting it sit for a couple minutes, I made a stitch line with my awl and tried to stitch as close as the machine would let me. Now that I've got the stitch down, I can trim off the excess leather. I recommend a big blade so you can keep the cut straight. And since this is going to be the main point of contact on the bag, I made sure to give a really good bevel and burnish so it's comfortable to grab onto. Now I can install the top handle to the bag. These tabs are the hardest part to stitch on a bag, uh, using a machine anyway, but it's definitely doable. If you're worried about ruining the bag, I'd recommend hand stitching this part. It wouldn't take that long and it would definitely eliminate the risk. These are the slits for the tuck lock base piece. I just use my smallest hole punch for the top and bottom of each slit, then cut through the middle with a small blade. Then push the tabs through the slits and slip the washer pieces over the tabs and fold them down. I like to use a hammer to make sure they fold right at the base. Make sure it's a snug fit without any play or movement, then we can cover it up. I used a pretty heavy piece of leather for this, but I think in the future I'll use something much lighter, like 3-4 to four ounces for this and probably natural veg to match the other interior pieces. Also, I'll probably stitch it on my other machine with lighter weight thread so the back side of the stitch is a little more subtle. Now I can glue the front strap to the lid, groove, and stitch, as well as the D-ring tabs to the gusset. The thicker the leather is on your gusset, the harder it's going to be to sew. 
I found that when I skived the six to seven gusset down to about five, it made it a lot easier. Again, if you decide not to skive, whether by hand or machine, it is possible, but it might be a little more difficult to get around the corners. With this style of bag, the front seam is turned inside out, which means you have to be very careful when roughing up the leather and applying glue, because if you get a little loose with it, then it'll show up once you turn it inside out. Once your glue is set, start by tacking down the top corners to make sure they line up perfectly. Then tack down the middle section and work your way to the rounded corners. Make sure you have a really strong bond so the leather doesn't shift or move around while you're stitching. If you're sewing on a machine, I recommend a cylinder arm and sew it with the gusset on top so that you can angle the back down and gracefully work your way around the corners. If you're going to stitch by hand, lay the bag down flat on the table and use your stitching punch to punch the holes after you've glued. I wouldn't recommend punching the holes in each side separately and trying to match them up. Now it's time to flip it inside out. This part is not for the faint of heart. It doesn't feel like it's going to turn, but you have to wrestle it into submission and show it who's boss. Once it's mostly flipped, you can use your fingers to kind of shape and knead the corners into place until it looks natural. Then it's time to do the same thing to the back seam. However, keep in mind, this one is not going to be flipped. So the seam will be exposed and so will the edges. So you want to take your time with it. I didn't film this part, but keep in mind, you don't line up the ends of the gusset with the top edge of the laptop divider. There's about an inch difference. So pull your pattern out again and use your front panel pattern to mark the height of your gussets. Then tack down the top edges of the gusset down first, like you did before. Then flip up the bag, line up the center, and work your way around to the corners. Make sure you get a really strong bond before you start stitching. If the corners are moving around at all or not sticking, apply some more adhesive before you move on. Since the seam is exposed, make an effort to keep consistent spacing between the stitch and the edge of the leather. I'd give yourself at least a quarter of an inch seam allowance so you don't risk falling off the edge on the backside. With three layers of leather coming together, you'll most likely need to trim it up and get it looking nice. You might even need to sand it a little bit after you've trimmed to really flatten the edge out. Then I followed up the trimming with a small edge beveler to round it off. I like my bags to be overbuilt, so I put some double cap rivets at the top of the stitch on the back panel. And then I decided last minute to add a little strap on the inside. It would be much easier to do this part earlier on before we stitched up the body, but it's just a simple double cap rivet on the back and a button snap on the tab. If you have a laptop or tablet in there, this will keep it from shifting around too much, but it also helps the bag kind of keep its shape. We're getting close, but we need to take care of some strap work. For the shoulder strap, we need a long piece that's about 47 inches long and a shorter section that's only about 13 inches long. But we also need a small four and a half inch piece for the tuck lock closure. One end needs to be flat, and I like the other side to have a nice rounded end. Then I'll wrap it around a one inch center bar buckle and secure it with a rivet. Then I'll slip on the male piece of the tuck lock, mark the holes for the set screws, then I'll punch some pilot holes with the smallest punch I have and start installing the screws, making sure they're flush with the backside. Then I'll feed the front strap through the buckle and it's ready to go. But we still need a shoulder strap. For the pad, it's pretty straightforward. When you're gluing them together, make sure you don't put any glue between the holes or else you won't be able to feed the strap through. I need a small strap keeper, which I made with a three quarter inch strap and staples. However, you can do this by hand as well, using a needle and thread and stitching a little X to hold it together. Then I'll slip it over the short end of the shoulder strap before I rivet the end with the clip. Then I'll feed it through the pad and punch seven adjustment holes that are one inch apart using about a 3 16 inch punch.
And there we have it, a finished bag that you can be proud that you made. If you're trying this on your own, good luck. I want to see what you do with it. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Pick up the pattern down in the description and we'll see you on the next one.